Hello students, my name is Dr. Gajendra Purohit and you are watching our YouTube channel where I upload videos for Engineering Mathematics BSc. Let me inform you that this topic of telescoping series is also asked in IIT, JE Advanced Gate and CSIR Net, IIT Jam exams and is also asked in graduation exams. It is relevant in such exams. This topic is about telescoping series and what exactly telescoping series is. And we will also learn the methods for finding the sum of such series using short and straightforward technique. I will try to explain. First of all, we will see what is a telescoping series. Let's understand that. So students, if we have any infinite series and if we can represent this infinite series in this way. So students, this is what we call a telescoping series, which means the nth term minus n plus 1 term. If we can write it in this form, then this is an infinite series that we have, which is called telescoping series. For example, here we have un. If I do the partial fraction of this, right, it is 1 upon n into n plus 1. If we do the partial fraction of this, then it will be a upon n plus b upon n plus 1. So how is partial fraction performed? What value of n makes a equal to 0? We will use 0. So substituting it gives us 1. Putting minus 1 for n makes b 0 for shortcut of partial fractions. I have uploaded a great video on ITAP. Check it out. If we put minus 1, then we get minus 1 upon n plus 1. So the partial fraction of it is this. It means this is the nth term and this is the nth plus 1 term, right? See, we can write it like this. If this happens, then this is called telescoping series. Now you will have a question in your mind. What makes the telescoping series so important? What is so special about it? Well, you need to understand that if you need to find the sum, then how do we calculate the sum? You need to understand this. That if I were to calculate the sum, I will put n is equal to 1. So here, if you put 1, it will be 1 minus 1 by 2 plus. Now if you put 2, it will be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3. Then if you put 3, it will be 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 and so on. This will go on like this, right? Up to 1 upon n minus 1 upon n plus 1. So you can see these 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 are cancelled out and so are these 1 by 3. The rest of the terms will cancel out in this series. Leaving the first term and the last term, all the other terms will be cancelled out. So the value we have here is 1 minus n plus 1, right? Since we have to find its value at limit n tends to infinity, so whenever you are asked about its sum, then whatever series we have, we need to find its value at limit n tends to infinity, right? So, when you take the limit as n tends to infinity, the first term will become 1 and the second term will approach 0. Therefore, what will the sum be? It will be 1, right? It is crucial for us to understand this because the telescoping series plays an important role here. When we encounter a series like this then, what is the sum of the series? v1 minus n tends to infinity vn because this is our first term. See this, here we have the v1, right? What will be v1? If n is equal to 1, then we will get v1, right? So v1 minus, here it will be vn plus 1. And when you put the limit of n tends to infinity for vn, then we will get 1, right? So in this way, we can do this very easily. And I just tried to explain this to you. Another method was also explained to you. We can understand this using both methods, right? Moving ahead. Now we have a question given here. So let's try to solve it here. We have Vn and this is our Vn plus 1. So if I explain the trick to you then, we have the value of this. It will be V1 minus limit n tends to infinity and it will be Vn. So if I replace n with 1, then from here the value that we will get is 1 by root 2. See we put the value here and minus limit n tends to infinity. Here it is either 1 upon root n plus 2 or Vn plus 1. It will be the same thing. So the value of this term at n tends to infinity will be 0. So this 1 by root 2 will be the answer. However, if you wish to understand the underlying concept better. So when we apply the concept here, we will put n equal to 1. So it will be 1 upon root 2 minus 1 by root 3, right? Plus when we will put 2, then we get 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 4. Substituting this value, we get 1 upon root n plus 1 minus 1 upon root n plus 2. Notice that these terms will cancel out, leaving us with just this final term. 1 by root 2 minus 1 upon root n plus 2 because we need to find its sum. So whenever we calculate the sum, then this is the nth term of its SOPS. So in the nth term, what should we do? Limit. n tends to infinity, then we find the SN. This will give us 1 by root 2. Since nothing happens as n tends to infinity, so limit n tends to infinity, it is 1 upon root n plus 2, this will be 0. So the value of this expression will be 1 by root 2 and that is what I was trying to explain. If you see, we will get this. When we do it, we get this term. Since this is the nth term of the SOPS, 
if we have to find the sum of this, then we put n tends to infinity here. As we put n tends to infinity, then this SOPS value will be 1. Whenever the SOPS is convergent, then the series that we get is also convergent. So, we need to pay attention here that whenever we have such a series, especially a telescoping series, it always becomes convergent. Why? Because its SOPS is convergent, it has a finite value, right? This is also something that you need to understand. For example, we have this question here, 1 upon n plus 1 into n plus 2. So, now you need to understand that when these types of questions are given, then there is a trick as well. You need to work on the trick, right? Before I share the trick, I want to explain the concept a bit. Essentially, if I am discussing this, it means you will get this type of series. If you are given a series like this, it is telescoping. Now, how is it telescoping? Look at this term. Here, the next term is this. No matter if there is difference of 1 or 2, but it must have a next term. If such a case is there, then such series that we have is called telescoping, if I try to write it. So, students, if we write this, then we get n plus 1 minus 1 upon n plus 2. Right, this is our Vn. This is our Vn plus 1 term and n is equal to 1 to infinity. So, as we substitute 1, 2 and so on, the terms will cancel out. So, in the end, the Sn will be the result when we substitute n with 1. This will be 1 by 2, right? And then the next term will keep getting cancelled. In the last, this term will remain and it will be minus 1 upon n plus 2. All the terms in between will be cancelled. Now, you will wonder how will they be cancelled. So, n is equal to 1 divided by 2 minus 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 3 minus 1 divided by 4 and this pattern will continue. This simplifies to 1 divided by n plus 1 minus 1 upon n plus 2. So, you can see these terms cancel out, leaving us with this result. Now, since we want to determine if the SOPS is converging or not and what its value is, so students note that the value of SOPS as n tends to infinity is equal to its sum, right? Here we have, if we apply this, then this will be 1 by 2 and the limit n tends to infinity, 1 upon n plus 2. So, what will be the value of this from here? It's 1 by 2. You need to understand that. Its value is equal to this. Look here, 1 upon n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 is given. If you need to find out what value this series will have, see here there was 2, now there is 3. You will think that if we have 3, then where did telescoping occur? Now we can convert it to telescoping by taking two different factors. Now a question will arise that, how can we convert whenever we have such a question? Well, I want to tell you that whenever such a question comes, then the sum of it is 1 by 2. Like we have 2 here and it goes till 2, so here it will be 1 upon 2. 2 factorial. Here its value will be 1 by 4, right? This is our short trick like n into n plus 1, n plus 2 and it goes up to n plus 3. So, 1 upon 3 into 1 upon 3 factorial. So, that means 1 by 18 is the answer, right? If n into n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3 goes up to n plus 4, then the answer will be 1 upon 4 into 4 factorial. It is important to understand the concept, especially if you get a descriptive question that you need to prove. You need to know that when you get such a question, you can do its partial fraction. So, a upon n, b upon n plus 1, c upon n plus 2. I have already taught the short trick of partial fraction in ITAB. What should we replace n with to get a equal to 0? We put 0. If you put 0, then it will be 0 and here 1 by 2. Here we get 1 by 2 n. What do we replace n with so that b equals 0? Minus 1. Except here, put minus 1 at all other places, so it becomes minus. It is minus 1 upon n plus 1. Now, at the place of n, put minus 2. So, replacing with minus 2 gives plus 1 by 2 as its value here. So, this is important to note. Now, we want to turn this into 1 by 2 here as we have 1 by 2 here. So, we multiply and divide by 2 on both the top and bottom. After you multiply and divide by 2, we separate this slightly. We separate these two. Now, in this, here this will be 1 upon 2 n minus 1 upon 2 n plus 1 here. And I will write minus 1 upon 2 n plus 1 and here plus 1 upon 2 n plus 2, right? I wrote them separately here. So, here we take 1 by 2 as common then we get 1 upon n minus 1 upon n plus 1, right? And we take minus 1 by 2 as common. So, we get 1 upon n plus 1 minus 1 upon n plus 2. Now, we will put these values here, right? The series that we get will be, as I take 1 by 2 as common factor, we get summation 1 upon n minus 1 upon n plus 1, where n is equal to 1 to infinity and minus 1 by 2. We have n equals 1 to infinity. This comes out to be 1 upon n plus 1 minus 1 upon n plus 2. So, this type of series is called telescoping series. I told you this is Vn and this is Vn plus 1. This is also a Vn and Vn plus 1 type of term. So, I just explained to you that how to solve such sort of series. See, it is 1 by 2. See, we have this as first term. When we put 1 in place of n, we get 1 minus, then all other terms will cancel out and here we will get n plus 1, right? This value that we have is Sn. 
So in the same way, when we follow the same process, we put 1 in place of n here. This will be 2 and minus n plus 2. Rest all the terms will be cancelled out. Now we find its sum. So the limit n tends to infinity as we calculate the value of n. Then this comes out to be 1 by 2 minus 1 and limit n tends to infinity. 1 upon n plus 1 n minus 1 by 2 and here we will be getting 1 by 2 minus limit n tends to infinity 1 upon n plus 2. So this is the value that we get. See it's 0 here and this is also 0 here. So this becomes 1 by 2 and here its value is minus 1 by 4. If we solve this it simplifies to 1 by 4. Using the shortcut trick I told its value is 1 by 4. So this way we can solve it very easily. So let's take this question now. Summation n is equal to 1 to infinity 1 upon n into n plus 4. Here is something to keep in mind whenever we have a difference like this. As I am telling you the trick, first understand this. It's 1 upon n into n plus 2, right? If you are getting something like 1 upon n into n plus 3, right? I will explain that as well. So, whenever we get such a question, then see till where it goes in the end. It is going up to 2 and 1 plus 1 by 2 if you see it here. So, here we have this going up to 3, thus it will be 1 plus 1 by 2, plus 1 by 3. This is something important to note. If you need to find its value, then its value will be 1 by 4. So, 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4, this will be its value. Whatever the sum is, that will be our answer, right? This is the trick to solve it. Now, you might be wondering about the underlying concept. What exactly is the concept? For this, you'll need to use partial fractions. Here it is a upon n plus b upon n plus 4. What should I substitute for n to make a 0? It's 0. So we put 0 here and get 1 by 4, making it 1 by 4 n. What do we substitute for n to make b 0? Minus 4. So it is minus 4. If we bring it here, then it becomes minus 4 n plus 4. Now you need to pay attention. Take 1 by 4 outside, right? Now, if we take 1 by 4 out, the series will simplify to 1 divided by n minus 1 divided by n plus 4, where n is equal to 1 to infinity. If you notice this, although it is a telescoping series, but in the middle we get 1 upon n minus 1 upon n plus 1. So we directly use that concept, but here the difference is more. So you will have to open this. So we will put n is equal to 1, right? If we substitute 1 into the series, the first term we get will be 1 minus 1 divided by 5. Then for the next term, we will have 1 divided by 2 minus 1 divided by 6. Plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 7 here. And that will be plus 1 by 4 minus 1 by 8. Now we need to understand it further. We get 1 by 5 minus 1 by 9. From here, our terms will start cancelling out. If you notice this 1 by 5, it's negative. From here, the terms will start cancelling out. As we move forward, when we get 1 by 6, it will be cancelled out. And the rest of all the terms will cancel out as well. So only this term will remain. If you notice, the term that will be left is 1 divided by 4. We will have 1 here and 1 by 2, 1 by 3 and 1 by 4. Because these terms cannot be cancelled by any other term. And then if we simplify this, we will get our answer. And the short trick that I referred to is also explained. So in this way, you can very easily do such questions. This question is for the comment box. How many seconds did it take you to solve this? Please comment if you want more videos on infinite series. The complete playlist is available if you are preparing for the CSIR net gate and IIT jam. If you want to improve your shortcut tricks, you can watch my videos here and subscribe to my channel here. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye.